Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today on the channel, we're going to be rebuilding my favorite mountain bike pedals. These here are the Pedaling uh, Innovations Catalyst pedals. You can see these are pretty beat up, but these are my favorite mountain bike pedals. They're just the giant platform pedals that I just like. Give you a lot of uh, room for your feet to, to move around on. But as you can see, if it'll focus, these are pretty beat up. They've uh, taken a lot, of, uh, a lot of abuse over the years. So we're gonna rebuild them. We're gonna replace the uh, spindle and the bushings and all the internal parts in here. We're gonna go ahead and replace some of these pins that need to be replaced. I think there's a couple actually missing on here. So we're gonna replace them while we're at this. So like I said, these are my favorite uh, mountain bike pedals. I've had these on the bike since I think 2018 at some point. So they're due uh, to have things uh, replaced. So let's uh, take a look at what tools we're gonna need to, uh, to do this rebuild on these. So here's the, what we're gonna need. First we have these, we have the new spindles from uh, Pedaling Innovations. They sent me to do this rebuild. We have that, the rebuild kit. We'll go over what's in them here in a second. Um, what other tools do we need? We'll probably need a flathead screwdriver, a little socket wrench with both an eight and a nine millimeter socket. We'll need six millimeter hex, a two millimeter hex to replace any of the uh, grippers on the uh, pedals. These, just for the record, are M4 um, by eight millimeter, uh, just cap screws or grub, grub screws, they might be called. Um, and you can get them at any hardware store if you live in the United States. And if you're in Canada, you kind of have to order them off Amazon. And then needle nose pliers, we might need these another pair of pliers to remove some of these screws that are on the pedals they might be stuck so we'll need that there some grease comes in handy and maybe a couple q-tips just for cleaning and possibly a pick so there's all the tools we're going to need to rebuild these pedals the other thing you will probably need is a vise um, so a bench vise to uh, to, to get the uh, bearings out, so we'll need that. So inside of this kit, you're gonna have two uh, end caps here, two end caps. You're gonna have two dust seals like so. Some bearings, there should be two sets of bearings for each uh, pedal. Some bushings and a couple uh, washers and nuts uh, to hold it all together and then we have the spindles here brand new spindles from them I'm not sure mine need to be replaced but after four years it's probably not a bad idea and they're pretty cheap so you will see on here uh, if you can focus on that maybe is that on this camera they do have the right and left designation on there. So this is the right pedal spindle. Basically the anatomy of sort of how this, this goes together, we're gonna have the uh, dust seal on here like so then the bushing, the bearings, the washer, and then the nut. So that's basically gonna be how this goes together. So like I said uh, in the intro here, these pedals are pretty beat up, as you can see. So I'm going to just basically do some inspections and remove some of these uh, pins that are pretty beat up and replace some of the ones that are missing um, Now they are two millimeter uh, Threaded like they are they do have a two millimeter head 
on there, but there a lot of them are pretty beat up and you, you probably won't be able to remove them with an Allen key. So you're just gonna need a pair of pliers to uh, do that. So I'm just gonna take out some of these that I know are pretty junked up. So I'm not gonna waste the whole time just going through and you know replacing all these pins, but uh, you get the idea of it. So I'm just gonna replace a couple of them here and then I'm gonna go with, go through later and uh, replace some more as I see needed. I know some of these are some of these are straight up missing, so I'm hoping these will just thread in place of the where they were missing from and like so. Let's get those in there. Like you get the idea, we can replace all these pins just with these little grub screws that you can get from any hardware store. We're gonna go ahead now and talk about how we can remove uh, what we need to replace inside of the pedal. Now this is the right pedal. You'll notice that it has an R there. If we get in close, R there. So that will come in important when we get to um, doing the bolt up at the end, it will be reverse threaded. Six millimeter Allen in here, and it should break free. You might have to secure this with uh, a pair of pliers or another six millimeter if you have it, but we'll just unscrew, unscrew that uh, end cap. So, and then down in there, if you can see down in there is the nut that we need to remove. And that's this eight millimeter. Now this is reverse threaded on here. So we'll actually be tightening this and then just have your six millimeter in the other side. There we go. So we're just going clockwise since it's reverse threaded, like I said. There's the nut on there. And now this should just slide out here. And it's actually surprisingly not in bad shape considering this is four years of abuse on here. So I probably didn't need to replace these spindles, but I think they're only like 10 bucks for the set. Um, so it's honestly probably not a bad idea to do this every few years. So we'll set this aside. So now we need to get the bearings out of here and the bushing. So that's what we'll need the vise for. So we're just gonna go ahead now and uh, just with a flat flathead screwdriver, we're just going to tap these bearings out. One, one out there, two out. So that just got the old bearings out of there. Let's get those out of there. So after you tap out the bearings uh, from the threaded side, there is the bushing on the uh, opposite side. This is where the pick comes in handy. Sort of if you have this kind of curled end on the pick, you can kind of get it in there, but you'll want to pull out that existing oh, bearing that just kind of popped out of there it was the bearing was inside there and I just kind of pulled it out I just kind of pulled it out of there so we're gonna go ahead and put the bushing in the non threaded side and if you look at that there if you can see maybe on this camera here there is a beveled beveled edge 
to that. So that's going to go down inside here. Push it down and then you should be able to take your uh, nine millimeter socket on there like so and drive it in there further. You should just be able to fill it bottom out in there. So there's the bushing in there. You should be able to see the edge of it in there. And then we should be able to now, we're going to take their, our bearings here and drop them down inside of there. I'm gonna put a little bit of grease down in there first. And these should just slide in like so. Now we can put our spindle in. We want to make sure we have the right one that's got the R on there. And apply some grease to it before we put it in there. Just get that nice and greased up there. Really should get a, a little brush or something instead of having to do this with my fingers all the time. Like so. Now you'll notice here on this end that the uh, screw hasn't come through the bearings. So what we'll do is we'll take the end cap here and we will just thread that in and push the bearings down uh, to where they need to be. So we'll just thread that in and that'll push the bearings down into place. Then once we get those threaded in, we can unthread it now and the bearings should be in the proper place. And make sure you remember to do this and not think you're done without screwing down, without putting the nut on the end there. So now we should take our washer and put it in place on here. Um, this is where a pick comes in handy again to kind of position that washer where we need it on there. And then we'll take our nut and our eight millimeter. And again, it's reversed thread. So we'll be going left to uh, tighten it. So they can thread it on there. And we'll just take the six millimeter, hold it in place here. Like so. And then we just finish it up by putting the end cap on there. We'll apply a little bit of grease to the threads on that end cap and thread it in. And then we'll be good to go. That pretty much has the whole thing complete. So we'll just thread this back in and we have rebuilt the pedal. All the bearings, bushings, spindle, everything has been replaced. So the internals of this are pretty much uh, as good as new. So that's uh, not too bad. Pretty easy overall. So th there you go guys. Just a quick video on how to rebuild your pedaling innovations catalyst pedals with the rebuild kit uh, they sell. Pretty straightforward and uh, yeah be great to have the internals built rebuilt on these pedals. Like I said they're four years old and they've had Plenty of abuse, even though the internal parts looked okay. Not a bad idea for like $10 to get them uh, good as new, at least internally. They're still pretty bashed up on the outside. But again, these are my favorite pedals. And if you haven't checked out Pedaling Innovations, you really should. Uh, great flat pedals. They even have an XL version, which I haven't tried yet, that are even bigger than these. I just like the big 
pedal, uh, lots of um, room for foot movement, so I don't have to have my feet in the exact perfect position. And this is what I keep my feet on the pedals with. So hope you guys liked the video. Just a quick little video from the shop. Haven't done one of these in a while, so thought I'd uh, do one up. So hope you liked the video, like and subscribe, all that. And until next time, keep your feet on the pedals.